Hi, I'm Neil. Hi, I'm Jeanette. Welcome, Welcome aboard, aboard Echo Echo. 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 it's uh, time for us to start thinking about leaving and uh, we know a little bit more this time than we did last working out what to do how to go about it one of the things we've got issues with is storage so um, 
internet went shopping yesterday bought some containers and now so we, we can get rid of the boxes so uh, now we've got to see what we can, what we can stuff in there um, there's you know, no shortage of candidates for that so uh, the fun begins now let's start getting ready to go back out there in the great big blue yonder which direction the wind's coming from and at the bottom of it there are a bunch, supposed to be a bunch of cups which ro go rotate in the breeze called an anemometer and uh, we got up the other morning to, know, to find that they had disappeared so we've got to see if we can get that situation resolved I believe this is about $400 per worth of equipment and the anemometer is only about $50 so we'll try and go for the cheap solution <coughs> Here's our new Sailrite sewing machine and Neil's trying to do his first ever sewing I think with a machine. And my first seam looks like a drunken sailor's wake. It doesn't look that bad. We're just making a couple of shade, uh, sort of like, yeah, shade things that we can put hang up for to keep the wind out of the way or keep the sun out of the way while we're having drinks in the cockpit and we're going to put some eyelets in the top and bottom of it so what's going on Jeanette? well we've got a really busy day today because today Hopefully by the end of today, we will have a water maker that is working, which hasn't been working for quite a while now. We are also getting the MMSI number changed on our EPIRB, so I'm waiting for the person to come and pick that up. I am also going to reload Garmin Blue Chart onto my iPad as it's had a little dummy spit and they've told me that I need to take off the app and put it back on and then have to uh, go and download all the charts again so I'm going to be busy doing that I'm also doing some emails at the moment and writing a list of the jobs that we still have to make sure we've done before we left before we leave the States and so it's going to be pretty busy and I'll probably end up spending some time in the cruisers lounge to use their Wi-Fi because the Wi-Fi won't work here on the boat and I can't even pick up any other Wi-Fi with our Wi-Fi for boats program so I'm going to have to try using the cruisers lounge or otherwise pay a lot of money with our modem for Wi-Fi 
ten dollars one gig and one gig when you're downloading uh, navigation charts doesn't really go very far so while you're doing all of that what am i supposed to be doing well hopefully you're going to be with the watermaker person and organizing the watermaker and either you or I will have to make some phone calls now that you have to find a notary person to witness your documents for selling the Queensland townhouse, which is a bit of a hassle that we have to do while we're here before we leave the States. I'm sure you will find some other jobs to do, Neil, while I've got my list of jobs. Home service to the boat. We've got the computer repair person is um, actually a mobile person and he's willing to come to the boat to help us with our computer problems. Let's hope he can solve my issue of my missing C drive. So what are you doing? Are you filming? I'm cleaning the dinghy. Why? It's just going to get dirty again. Because it was really dirty and I'm getting off the rust and all bits of fluffy stuff that's on the bottom and it's super dirty so look at the difference between that and that. Look at the cloth. See? No rust down that end, or very little now, making a big difference. What are you doing, Neil? I'll tell you in a minute. And why have we got these green sticky numbers all over the dinghy, Jeanette? Oh, because we needed to have some numbers register our boat to be in Fort Lauderdale and Miami, so we decided we'd use our boat registration numbers that we haven't put on the boat. We've put them on the dinghy, so our dinghy's registered to go with this vessel. That's how I look at it. So at least it's got some numbers on it and it'll keep those policemen away from us, hopefully. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, let me be. I need to go and do my work. And while she's doing, Jeanette's doing that, I'm busy making a new anchor snubber line because the last one's just rotted and I lost my chain guard from the last one. So. Just making up a new one. Consists of a chain hook, shackle, thimble, line. I just put my chafe guard hose on the end of it and uh, we're nearly done. Yeehaw, another project knocked off. What have you got there, Neil? Well, we've been shopping, which seems to be synonymous with boats. We've been getting the last of the gear that we need to uh, do something a little bit more exciting than go up and down the ICW. First thing we've got, <coughs> we bought this because we like the colour. It's a yellow plastic thing. Now, actually what it is, it's, it's the modern equivalent of a Dan Boy. So rather than having the horseshoe and the pole and the flag and the light and the whistle all stuck outside, um, this thing hooks over your rail and if someone throw it, goes, accidentally falls overboard, you throw it at them so that the evidence is destroyed. Actually, that's not true, but it's what it is. It's a self-inflating pole with a little stirrup so you can sit in it, and then it, it, the flag just waves at us. So that uh, sits on our stern rail. 
and this this thing, uh, this is a Seabrake, it's a uh, Australian manufactured product, which uh, the, the theory behind that is if we end up in some really, really horrible waves and we are going too fast downwind, we can slow the boat down um, by using this, this thing. And it's got a couple of other funky features which I hadn't anticipated when I bought it. And they go into a great detail about it here. You can also use it for emergency steering by rigging a bridle. You can pull one side or the other so it's our backup steering thing. You can also use it as a, a, a what they call a stabiliser, I call a flopper stopper at anchor. You hang it on the end of your, your whisker pole and it, when, it, when the boat rolls one way it fills up with water and then makes it, slows the rotation the other way, st stops the flopping. And the other one, I, I just love this, although we don't need it because we've got a, 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 a real one. You can use it as a bosun's chair. Now, I've never tried this, so I'm going to try it today. So. so somehow, apparently, you're supposed to jump in this thing stick your legs out the side hook it up and you get hoisted up I think this is this is this is wonderful I get, get the impression that um, the guy that invented this in Australia is probably a farmer and they make sure things can do multiple things I suppose I could even use it as a fashion accessory if we ever have to go to a fancy dress ball it's like what have you come as a drogue obviously but anyway so that's some of the things we bought. So anyone, anybody wonders why it is that cruisers are perpetually broke? It's because we buy stuff like this. Wait. Okay, Neil's boredom of catching all the buses today. He's going a bit crazy at the wait. waiting to cross the road. Wait, 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 wait. Wait, 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 relief valve to see when it's set for and when it's going to blow which means in a good way though that it will release water so that we need to have the pressure valve set to around 950 at the moment it's going off at 820 which is too low an amount so we need to try and adjust it so uh, when we normally make water we make it around 850 and we need the pressure relief valve to release after that 850 so we want it set about 950. we finally think we might uh, have cracked what the issue is. It's such a disruptive thing. I'll show you how things look in order to get it the stuff that we need. Jeanette supervising. We've got inlet and outlet valves everywhere. And there's Bobby Three Elbow Bargar who's uh, doing a brilliant job down there. So we'll have 
for another update later on when we hopefully have finished all of this. Another shitty day in Miami, weather here hasn't been real great at all. So what do you do when the weather's shitty? You go out in it and you go shopping. But here's the here's the skyline, what you can see of it in the rain. Way more exciting than shoes. Anyway, here we go. An hour and a half later, we've just got off the first bus to try and go and find our pump. Now we're on our way to get a train. Lost again. And now we walk. The elusive hump. We're lost again. Jeanette's off to find directions or buy a new car, whichever comes first. We've just arrived back from doing some of our provisioning from the Publix and we took the dinghy up the channel under a few narrow bridges, very low bridges to, to take the dinghy and as you can see the dinghy is pretty full uh, but that's not all of our provisioning yet. First of probably three loads and <laughs> I don't know where it's going to fit. I think I might end up having to sleep in the cockpit and be displaced by food. But anyway, it is what it is. What you're doing in there, Jeanette? Looking for an extra cabin we haven't found yet so you can store some food. Well, we have to put the food into these bags, so I have to take the things out of here so that I can actually get to the bags to be able to store the food that's going to be stored for quite a long time. And this space we're looking at, this is, is actually the cabin that our crew member is going to be. Uh, so he can, he'll be sleeping on top of the sails, maybe. Huh? So, uh, it's going to be an issue. Anyway, on with it.
our new crew and, member uh, Harry arrived yesterday. It's so been here overnight. We, and I mess with all the time. We've, we've got them working already. So what are you doing there, Harry? Oh please, sir! Please, sir! Just a just a little bit more. <laughs> <laughs> we we have a motto on this boat: "Foggings will continue until morale improves." So get on with it. What are you up to, Jeanette? Cleaning the stainless steel. It's just going to get dirty again. I know, but it's easy if you keep it under control, just like you, Neil. <laughs> <laughs> yeah.